Perfect. So as I said, some of this stuff we're going to be, you're going to end up just kind of doing on your own, but some of the stuff we're going to be able to um, be able to take a look at. So uh, we're going to go back to a lab table. I'm going to bring you guys with, let me see that we're um, looking at the right thing. Where's my camera? I want you guys facing out, All right? Say hi to your classmates. Hello, everybody. All right? Notice we're pretty empty here today. I think there's a couple of like APIA and APRA tests maybe today that um, have us a little on the, the slow side here. So uh, we're just going to go. You guys can come back with me. We're going to go to this first lab. Table. Uh, hey, you can, you don't need to, it's come kind of up to you. Um, but we're going to take a look at this. I'm going to show you guys, be careful because, um, these are glass and if they drop, they'll break. But, um, at a, in a moment, I'm going to have you guys, I'm going to be able to show you guys the lens, uh, through the camera. You'll be able to see, but just kind of take a look, you know, look at something that's far away. Look at something that's up close, right? Remember what happened when we put the object Remember, the object is what we're looking at, right? Remember what happened when we put the object really far away compared to really close when we had the convex mirror, right? Now we have the concave mirror, and I want you to notice what we have. So I'm going to try to uh, do this without dropping my iPad, but you can see, right, through the lens, there's the stool. We're going to look at something that's even closer, right? You can see... Um, oh, there's a glare right there. Let's find a different, there we go. Um, it doesn't really change much, even if we, right? Hi, Evan, welcome to class. Like you can see what happens when we've got objects that are even a little bit farther away, right? Like looking across the room at the computers and things like that, right? So just kind of notice what you see. Take a look at some things around you, close to you, far away, all that different stuff. You know, hopefully you are recognizing that um, everything ends up right side up, everything ends up smaller, right? And everything is on the same side of the lens as what the actual object is, right? But nothing appears to be in front of the lens. Like if you remember the concave mirrors that we had, right? The objects actually, when we look, remember we had the light bulb trick that we did as people walked in the room, everything looked as though it was out kind of in front of the mirror. This is clearly everything looks like it's behind it. Um, sorry, I have you guys like just staring at the floor. But um, the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to, and would you mind getting the lights for me, please? And this is a little harder to see, but we're going to, um, we've got kind of the light bulb set up to where we would project it onto a sheet of paper. You guys might want to come around for this. And you'll notice, right, there is no, um, hold on one second, let me turn, let me turn this off really fast. That's a lot of light. Okay, sorry about that. I know you guys are just kind of wandering through the dark right now, but that's okay. Um, all right, so we've got this, we put the paper here, you can see, uh, on the paper, there is no, where are we? There, sorry. There is no image, right? We don't even get the light of an image. You can kind of around the edges, not really on the on the zoom, but you can see some some light kind of around the edges from it being scattered out. But right, we don't we can't project an image using a concave lens like this. It just doesn't happen. Right. Um, so you guys want to come take a look at this really fast, right? We've got you guys remember the ray boxes, right? Where it puts out parallel rays for us, right? And then you can see what happens as we pass through the lens, we get right this spread out effect, right? That's because this is what we call a diverging lens, right? It causes our light rays to spread, not to come together. But, sorry guys, if you were to try to trace back, right? These lines here, you would see that they look like they're all coming from kind of one central point right here. That's the focal point. But because the rays don't actually go through the focal point, our focal point is a negative focal point for a concave lens, right? So that's something that we're going to want to have, we're going to want to remember too. Because the rays don't actually go through there, they just appear as though they're coming from there. 
right? This ray, if we didn't see all the rest of it, if we just saw this ray right here, right? It looks like it's coming from some spot over here. There's nothing sending that light from there, right? It just looks like that because it looks like it's coming from that focal point, not actually coming from that focal point. We make our, our focal distance is negative. So for a concave mirror, you want to remember that our F is always going to be a negative number, right? Um, and you'll see that these rays never actually come together, right? So that's a little bit different for us too. So when we go to do a ray diagram, just like we did with, if you remember the, the, con the convex mirror, right? Where it kind of spread all the light out. We're gonna end up tracing light rays back with our dotted lines in order to find out where the image actually would appear to be. And that's actually what we're gonna do now is spend a little bit of time going over um, ray diagrams and, and taking a look at that. Why is there a shadow? What do you mean? Like this little shadow like right here? Uh, it might just be from where, because you get one, this thing's just not perfect, right? So it might be from some light that's coming from up here, but not, yeah, it's just from a not perfect lens type of thing. So the focal point will be negative, right? And then, yes. But like, isn't the source of light coming from like, there, so, so, it's so remember the light source is our object technically when we do that is the light source right we oh, see things okay, because the light reflects off of things right like you don't you don't actually see me you see the light that reflects off of me right so that's where like when we do our ray diagrams we draw these light rays that like oh, I'm not actually yeah. emitting light, but the light rays that bounce off of me are what's going to pass through the lens to be seen. So does that mean like all the stuff we've already done, like and like the ray diagrams for refraction were convex and that we're just now starting concave, or what's the difference? Yes. Okay. So yes, we're those were all we've all we've done all convex lenses yeah. and now we're gonna do concave okay. lenses. Okay. Exactly. All right, let's go take a look at some ray diagrams then. And then um, that'll kind of be the end. You guys can practice on some stuff and you'll have a, a little bit of time to yourself. Um, all right, so let's go back. I need to. I was like, I got to make sure. I made a shirt. Yeah, I made a shirt. And it's like, no, I don't even know. Yeah, it's all weird. What do I need to do? Oh, that's right. Go on to Zoom. I need to jump onto the Zoom here. Awesome. And I'm going to share my screen again. So you're just going to, oh, sorry, guys. This is just kind of in the packet. So I'm going to, oops, um, I guess it's page 38, maybe. It's just a couple of concave lenses. 37, is that what it is? Thank you. I keep forgetting that I added a page. You guys at home are seeing the, the lenses, right? You guys are seeing the pictures. Come on. Okay. 
now there's nobody. Can you guys hear me okay? Yep. Oh, okay. All right. Um, all right. So we're going to go over the ray diagrams for a concave lens. And they do get a little on the tricky side. Um, this is one, honestly, we're going to go over both of these. Uh, you may, may very well, though, um, want to at some point just practice and retry and practice and retry. There's not a ton of these as far as being on the um, as practice because well, what did you guys know? You should have noticed that everything that you saw was the same. So regardless of where the object is, your ray diagram is going to produce the same virtual right side up image inside of that. Like, you know what I mean? Like all of that's going to be the case. So you don't want to, they don't give a ton of practice on here, but you might want to just kind of erase and try again and erase and try again, just because these can be a little on the tricky side. However, the rules are still the same, right? So we're going to, and you might, it, just to make it a little easier, um, something that I'll do, because technically, if you remember, we treat everything at that center of the lens. So it might make it easier for you if you were to go ahead and drop a line just straight down the middle of your lens. You don't have to, but remember with lenses, technically you get a bend when you go from air to the lens and then another bend when you go from the lens to the air, but we can just treat it all as if it happens at the middle, right? So for me anyways, it makes it a little bit easier to drop that line down the middle um, just so that I've got it there and I'm not trying to like estimate things, but whether or not you do it or is completely up to you. Um, so remember, there's going to be three basically incident rays that we're going to want to look at, right? We're going to want to look at the incident ray that goes in parallel, the incident ray that looks like it's going to go through the far focus, and then the incident ray that goes straight through the vertex, okay? Um, so just as before, and I think I'm using the same colors as before, we're going to go in parallel. Right, so we go, that's not very parallel. Let me try that again, I'm sorry. Right, we're gonna go in parallel and then we um, go out as if, and this is where things get a little on the tricky side, right? It bounces out as if it's coming from the focal point, right? So we can, Just kind of do this line that goes from the focal point through there. And that's our actual ray. And then remember that this one though, we want to have dotted coming back. and put little arrowheads so that we remember what direction we're going, right? So in parallel, out as if it's coming from the focus. All right, the next one we're gonna do is through as if we are gonna go through the focus. And then it comes back parallel but remember, then this is where it gets a little on the tricky side, right? Remember, it doesn't actually go through the focus. So what I want to do is I'm going to, whoops, I only want partial and a little bit bigger. I need to erase that line because it doesn't actually go through that focus. All right, remember at this point, the next, when it goes in as if it's going to the focus, it comes out parallel. I 
going to do a very good job with this, it seems. Because We can put our image here. All right, and then if we're still, if we want to test it, we can always do our third that goes through the vertex. And you see, we've got, no, so I missed my, my image by a little bit. I should have drawn that a hair to the right, but that's okay. All right, so we've got, just as we did before, we've got our three rays that we can draw. We only have to do two, remember that. So we got the three that we can draw in parallel, and then as if it's coming from the focus, as if it's gonna to go to the opposite focus, and then but out parallel, and then through the vertex. All right, so let's practice that again, just so that we get it. All right, so I'm gonna take this one, and this, my first one's gonna go in parallel. I feel like that's not. Does that look parallel to you? Oop, that's not what I want. We want that one to be dotted, don't we? How you choose to do this, if you want to have it do that, or kind of notice I did it two different ways. All right, and then our next one is going to go as if it's going through the far focus. Um, right, but we don't actually want that to be there. And we dot it backwards. At this point, we can make our image. And it's important to recognize that our image is going to happen where those dotted lines intersect, right? Not where a solid line intersects a dotted line. Right? It's always about where it gets traced back to. And just for good measure, we can always still go ahead and do my straight through the vertex. And again, we'll notice that that also goes right through the tip of my arrow, which means I did an okay job with the first two. All right, so three rays for the ray diagram. In parallel. out through same side focus. In through opposite side focus. Oops, started combining my words. Out parallel. And then lastly, straight through vertex.
and some rules that we have regarding our convex, excuse me, concave lenses is our image is always going to be virtual. It's always going to be right side up. It's always going to be smaller. Right, so again, kind of like with the, and this is what's crazy because the concave mirror is like the convex lens and the convex lens is like the con, you know what I mean? Like they, like they, they rotate, like the concave lens is what gives us the virtual image when it was the opposite when it came to the mirror. So it gets a little on the tricky side, right? There's, this is why, you know, when it comes to this stuff, I, all I can tell you is your best bet is to practice. Like, it looks like, oh, okay, I get it. It's just those same ray diagrams. But what I can tell you is first hour, I messed up my first ray diagram, right? Because I hadn't done one in a little while. And like I went through and I kind of stuttered through. I mean, I got it. I didn't do it wrong, but I stuttered through it a little bit because it had been a year since I had done it. And it's, it, it's a little on the tricky side when it's the fourth of, two different types of mirrors and two different types of lenses that, right? So practice, okay? This isn't something that should be very difficult, but it is a little on the confusing side with everything that we've already done leading up to this point. Any questions, any comments, any thoughts, any concerns? All right, so you guys are gonna have the rest of this time, you can finish up the exploration, do any looking up that you need to do, um, anything like that, um, wrap up. You've got um, a new master in physics, not new, but um, one that is due in uh, five days or something. I think it's due on next Monday. Um, you can work on that. You can work on... Um, Schoology practice quizzes, getting caught up on those or working on this unit one, whatever you need, uh, the next 18 minutes is yours. If you're at home, you wanna log off and spend the 18 minutes on your own, you are good to do that. If that's the case, enjoy the rest of your day, take care of yourselves. We shall see you tomorrow. Well, that's so great. He, he told me why. He said to the value of useless.